in terms of making money, generating revenue. I'm a businessman. I'm not an investor like Marvin Guillermo, but I do have investments, financial investments, because it is tough to just put your money in the bank and watch inflation eat it up. So I do have financial investments. It's just that I invest in my network more. Hey guys, welcome back to the Leadership Stack Podcast, the podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs to increase your leadership, teamwork, and profits. This is your host, Sean C, aka Mr. CEO at 22. Question from RJ Legaspi, what are your top five investments? Top five investments. Well, I mentioned the agriculture investment that for me, in my opinion, is one of the best investments that me and my wife has made. Uh, it's a private investment with a friend, so it's not available to the public, unfortunately, but it's a really good investment, really good returns. And the person I invested in is a good friend, a person of integrity, and a brilliant person also. He's the fifth generation running the, the agri business, so he really knows the ins and outs. I mentioned also last time that investing in your spirit is a very big deal for me. So when I say that I invest in my spirit, that means I read God's word every day. I meditate on it. I talk with him every day. That's prayer. I journal. And, and these are things that are very, very important for me, much more than money. So since you only mentioned investments, not financial investments, one investment that I would say is actually the top one investment is investing in my spirit. I also invest in my relationships. So I guess that's going to be top two or top three, somewhere there. Network is very important. I'm a businessman. First and foremost, in terms of making money, generating revenue, I'm a businessman. I'm not an investor like Marvin Guillermo, but I do have investments, financial investments, because it is tough to just put your money in the bank and watch inflation eat it up. So I do have financial investments. It's just that I invest in my network more. So I get to know people. I go to mixers. I go to events. I get to know new people, meet new people. Right now, it's a little bit tougher because we're just at home, but it's not impossible. So I still meet new people. People still get referred to me, and it's all good. Another investment that I make in terms of financial investment, I invest in, in a, a copy trading platform. If you want to know more about that, maybe you can just DM me. I'll send you the link. I'll show you even people that I'm copying. These people I'm copying, the gains are upwards of 20%, 60% per annum. So that's actually a very, very good vehicle if you want to grow your revenue or make your money work for you passively. That is something that I could share with you. Just uh, send me a PM or DM, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. Or actually in Discord, you can send me a DM there and uh, I'll let you know about who I'm copying and about the copy trading, trading platform as well. And I could help you out if you're going to have difficulties in signing up because some people do. I can expedite that one for you. The last investment I would say is an investment in your health. We all know how expensive our body is. Our body is super duper expensive because when you get sick, the hospital charges you in the six to seven digits in a matter of few, a few weeks. So that is a big deal. If you don't invest in your health, your health could crumble down or you could uh, get wind of whatever virus is out there. Maybe it's not COVID. Maybe it's something else. We don't know. Only God knows. But I would say that it is going to wreak havoc on your finances. So invest in your health, in your physical health as early as now. From Patrick, how do you pitch to people for a project you really want to collaborate with? Well, if I know who the person is, it's as simple as hitting them up, chatting them or, or calling them up or setting up a Zoom meeting, if walang pandemic, setting up a face-to-face -face meeting, that's usually how I do it. If not, then I usually look for a kakilala. So, uh, meron ba akong kakilala, nakakilala <laughs> kakilala rin nila, and I ask that person to introduce us. That's really the best way. So, make use of your network, make use of your connections. I'm sure you've heard the phrase or saying, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. And that is very important. Make sure to practice that in your life. Broaden your network. Get to know people. Give value to other people. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm not getting anything out of this. I get no money, no payments, no endorsements out of sharing what I know with you on the podcast or live on Facebook and YouTube. But 
people get to get connected with me. And that is important for me as well. How is it like working with your wife in the workplace? I couldn't be happier, honestly, because not a lot of people could work with their spouse. Not a lot. Sometimes they're afraid. Sometimes they want to hide things. Sometimes they just keep on having conflict. And that's saddening because, you know, early on in the history, in our history as human beings, people used to work alongside each other, family, spouses. We used to farm. And when we farm, when we grow food on our own, usually the husband and wife works alongside each other. That's human history. And that's that helped the family to bond better. But now, for some weird reason, it has been split. And husbands and wives oftentimes work different jobs and don't like working on the same company, which is saddening because a lot of factors come in between. They grow separately they grow apart you know it's saddening when these things happen or or one person would have extramarital affairs or one person would just not be happy one person could be depressed and file for divorce the, the divorce rate today is is just phenomenal it has never been this at this rate since the beginning of time and i think that it's because we have seen working with our spouse in the workplace as something as taboo I could, for me, I couldn't be happier that I get to work with my wife. She compliments me perfectly. I actually want her to lead more than I do because I'm a very high D person in the DISE spectrum. And I tend to just focus on tasks, focus on output. I want things done well. I want things done right the first time. And that sometimes it's not that good for some people. Sometimes they want na yung boss mo malambing, yung boss mo mas okay makipag-usap sa'yo or kinakamusta ka lagi. I'm not that kind of a leader. I'm more of a leader who would drive you, who would really make sure that you grow and who would push you to your limit. I'm that kind of a leader. And I do tell this in the interview process. Everyone who comes in the company, I do tell them this. So I warn them ahead. This is the kind of leader that I am. Someday you're going to look back and say, I learned a lot from Sean. That's that's my leadership style. While my wife's leadership style is more of the malambing, nangangamusta. You know, she she really gives you time and care. And I'm not like that at all. I'm more of an automation guy. I'm more of a an output guy. And she she compliments me very well that way. And apparently, a lot of people want their leaders to be that way instead of my way, which is you know output output, doing things right the first time making sure that the clients are happy instead of disappointed, making sure we don't leave things on the table, making sure you do your best instead of just okay. Not a lot of people want that kind of a leader because I'm a hard leader. I really make sure that you improve as a person. I make sure you grow as a person. Sadly, no, sadly, not a lot of people want that kind of a leader and prefer the malambing and caring leader. If you can be both, perfect, fantastic. I congratulate you. It's just that for me, it's it's tough to be both. I'm I usually lean towards the the natural design of, of God for me. No? So I'm still learning. I'm still a work in progress in that way. Businesses don't grow in this nice, straight, smooth path. And basically, it's kind of this fits and spurts that you'll have some sections that are that are nice and smooth growth, but then you'll other have other sections that are just this basically real turbulent, almost whitewater kind of phase. <laughs>